Hello everyone, welcome to this session on Docker versus Virtual Machine. Today in this session, we will be discussing the differences between these two technologies that, that is Docker and a virtual machine. Now, as you all know, Docker is basically a containerization platform and the main difference between Docker and virtual machines is that Docker is basically very small in size, right? And virtual machine is a full on operating system that you have to use for your applications. But in what cases should you use Docker and in what cases you should use virtual machine and some more differences we will be talking about in this session. So guys, let's go ahead and start off with the session. But before we move on, guys, if you haven't already, please subscribe to the IntelliPath channel and also click on that bell icon to never miss out on any updates from us. So let's get started. Before we begin with this quick comparison between Docker and a virtual machine, we need to understand what a Docker is. So here's a quick uh, start at what Docker means. Well, Docker is actually a virtualization tool, which means that it will give you the ability to basically deploy your applications and manage your applications, just like a container ship docked at a port. For example, the basic working of Docker involves uh, the usage of containers through which applications can easily be deployed and in fact managed as well. Because at the end of the day, if you have a business, here are some of the constraints. Uh, you know, you will have a lot of applications you'll have to run. You might have cloud services and everything to do with in-house infrastructure. So as a business, there's a good chance you're not using a common architecture which the rest of the world is using. So you, you would have developed your own protocols and you'll be using your own infrastructure and probably make all the client related services talk to that and make it compatible with the in-house infrastructure right so this is a constraint and this becomes the business constraint so at the end of the day it's not opening up the portfolio to be automated or to be secure either because you cannot really implement things faster there because it's based on what's existing rather than offering scalability now here's the solution to docker Docker, since it's a container based platform, basically what it will do is it will make sure that, you know, all of your applications, all of your microservices, uh, you know, you can have multiple operating systems. You don't have to have, you know, one server probably running Windows server and then, you know, having all the clients connected to that. No, with the case of Docker, you can have multiple operating systems. It will make sure that the entire procedural operations part of your company is automated. And in fact, uh, you know, your data is secure as well. Now quickly coming on to what a virtual machine is, well, a virtual machine as the name suggests is in fact a virtual copy of another running machine. Think of it like that. Now, you might have used virtual machines before if you're a, if you're a Windows user who wants to try out Linux or try out operating systems, of course, Ubuntu is Linux as well. Uh, if you want to try them out, there's a good chance you would have installed them on an environment called as a virtual machine uh, using tools like VMware and more uh, rather than installing it side by side with your existing operating system, right? Of course, this is not the case always but I just giving you an example now if this is the case you might know that with uh, you know using Ubuntu inside Windows is basically creating a snapshot of what Ubuntu is in its entirety and making sure that it works on its own inside of Windows right so virtual machine is something like that so virtual machine is just that it will create another runtime environment it will create another system environment and it will let you use it uh, in the host machine now you might ask saying, why would I require a virtual machine, right? I can install two operating systems side by side. Now, there are multiple advantages of using a virtual machine. Uh, it's meant for beta testing. It's very optimal and it makes sure that, you know, all of your uh, alpha testing, beta testing and, uh, you know, all of the functionalities are proper before moving to a production launch and it helps here immensely. The second thing is that it will efficiently let you create backups of your existing operating systems. You know, virtual machines can be used to take snapshots of your entire operating systems, just like a picture. So the entirety of all of the states, all of the application settings, everything is maintained. So creating backups becomes that much easier. Now, uh, You'll be creating backups only to ensure that your software uh, is functional at all times, right? So there, there might be times when there are certain bugs in the software, bugs in the operating system and certain errors which might occur. Well, uh, virtual machines are used for that as well. It's used to debug all of these applications and software too. Now, if you're wondering about the last point, which is server virtualization, well, uh, think of this. Uh, whenever you're connected uh, to one machine and let's say your application is a server-based application where you know it requires about four or five machines to actually run and 
to for you to see if it works or not with the server virtualization technologies available in today's virtual machines basically one virtual machine uh, uh, you know one snapshot of the virtual machine uh, can be created and virtualized in a way where it seems to be a uh, four or five machines or any number of machines that you want uh, as per your requirements so that you can test these applications to make sure that they work fine or not so even with one host program one virtual machine uh, you can pretty much use server virtualization to test your applications to see if it will work fine so whenever it runs in a server environment as well now with this we can quickly jump to the comparison between docker and virtual machine and of course the first point being os architecture now when we talk about os architecture the main functionality of docker uh, is the usage of one single operating system across all of its entities called containers so basically what happens is one single operating system is used here in the case of docker and it's shared among all of the containers that the data is divided into now you might be wondering if uh, you know if if uh, all these entities are divided into containers and if they use the same operating system what about the kernel well uh, the answer to that is again uh, amazing as well because it uses just one single kernel or it's called as a monolithic kernel for all of its uh, os operations so it's one os one kernel but multiple containers in the case of virtual machine uh, you know you, you can have any number of operating systems uh, installed because you, you can have one host operating system on which you'll have the virtual machine and you can have any number of virtual machines with practically any OS that you require because this is completely based on application. This is an advantage and a disadvantage as you'll see in the next couple of points. Now uh, coming to security. Since there is use of one kernel throughout the containers and one operating system, Docker becomes a bit more susceptible to attacks because the entire container containerization technology and all of the techniques that goes into this technology basically means that if there is an unauthorized access to one of the containers due to the nature of the shared host kernel, they can uh, have access to all of the data as well. So Docker is a bit more susceptible here. Now, when you talk about virtual machines, virtual machines have their own kernel. So each and every operating operating system that you choose to run in separate virtual machines have their own kernels right this means that whatever or whoever is trying to access uh, the data present will require a lot of privileges will require a lot of security access a lot of protocols in fact are put into place to make sure that your data is secure so in this round i believe that the virtual machines have an upper hand uh, just because of its standalone nature and then coming to point number three it's performance See, Docker is meant to have a structure that is very lightweight. It will make sure that it is not at all resource intensive when it comes to usage of your memory, usage of your input output buses, or even in fact, the usage of your CPU. Virtual machines, on the other hand, are not lightweight. In fact, they are, they are very resource intensive, as you might have already seen uh, in case if you have tried the Ubuntu Windows example that I've told you about. So you will know that they're a bit more uh, resource intensive in terms of memory, especially and CPU, because at the end of the day, you have to preload an entire operating system onto the one that you're already using and then provide it uh, with the required power to run, right? So this makes uh, virtual machines a bit more resource intensive. Now coming to point number four, point number four, we talk about scalability. Docker is a new technology. It's one of the most amazing things uh, that's happening in the world of containerization because it provides a lot of advantages to any technology wherever uh, it's deemed fit. And at the end of the day, its architecture again is meant for scalability. So if the talk is about scalability, so Docker just wins this even without comparison, to be honest. But then of course, since we're talking about virtual machines as well, uh, you need to understand that virtual machines cannot be scaled easily because you will have to do duplicate each and every operating system and you have to make sure uh, that you know these operating systems are installed in every single machine that you're trying to virtualize and each of these machines will of course have their own kernels and you know scaling these is not an easy task at the end of the day so if it's scalability docker wins this round now coming to operational engines so when we talk about operational engine, uh, basically it's the execution engine. It's the heart of what governs the working of Docker or the virtual machine as well. In the case of Docker, we have something called as the execution engine uh, that is present in all of the containers that will make sure that, you know, all the tasks of the containers and all the functionalities work fine. 
in the case of virtual machine again we have an entity which is slightly similar to the execution engine but again works in a very different way it's called as the hypervisor and it will make sure that all of the tasks are running smoothly as well so the difference you have to look out here is the actual usage of two different engines that work on two very very different architectures and now with this we come to point number 6 with point number 6 we talk about interference now when the talk is about interference the entirety of the docker architecture is slightly more prone to interference uh, because you know there is no isolation each of the containers have the ability to talk to each other and at the end of the day this will make sure that you know if there is an adversary that's present in one of the containers or if there is an adversary that can affect one of the containers this means that uh, due to the lack of isolation in between these entities it is slightly more prone to interference in real world with the case of virtual machines uh, virtual machines are very very tight knit prone to uh, uh, interference because at the end of the day every single virtual machine on its own is a snapshot of a machine as we discussed previously and it's present independent of each other so it means that it has the least probability of interference because of its entire nature which it being isolated and in fact its architecture helps here as well so if the talk is about interference virtual machine wins this now coming to point number 7 it's the boot time so when you talk about boot time i think again docker wins even before we have an entire discussion on this particular uh, concept because docker was meant to be very lightweight and this ensures that it is not resource intensive it ensures that all of the applications and in fact all of the containers first uh, you know boot up really quickly and this even on the distributed architecture scale is actually very quick and it makes sure that all of the containers boot up very rapidly as well now coming to virtual machines virtual machines will take a slightly more amount of time than docker because understand this you have to again you know load the entirety of an operating system on an already running operating system so whatever host operating system you're running on that will already be consuming some amount of cpu input output uh, buses and in fact even some good amount of memory as well now you have another virtual machine running on top of it this of course will require uh, you know lot more of these uh, resources right well this alongside the fact that you have to have an entire operating system to make sure it actually runs will uh, you know take a few minutes to boot up as well so if the talk is about boot time docker wins and this brings us to point number 8 point number 8 is deployment this is again another advantage for docker because docker is very very easy to deploy due to its architecture so its entire goal when docker was built was to make sure the deployment is made easy and deployment is made easy how because all of the containers have the same image so beat any platform that the requirement calls for Docker makes sure that at the end of the day you can deploy everything very easily because there's only one image uh, across these platforms. Now, so if the talk is about virtual machines, virtual machines will have separate instances as we have previously discussed. So basically separate instances of working operating system. What this means is that it will be a little more uh, lengthy in terms of how you can deploy it and in fact how quick uh, you can deploy it as well. So time and procedure becomes a bit lengthy. It adds to resources, it adds the time so uh, again if it's if the talk is about deployment docker was meant for that and it can do and it can do it very efficiently and then you might be curious about understanding which one is easy to learn and get started right well this is a bit complex to answer in fact because at the end of the day docker might be a little complex in case if you have not had any training in docker because there's a lot of uh, docker managed mechanism there's a lot of techniques there's a lot of tools involved into understanding docker and making efficient use of it not just use but efficient use of it in the case of virtual machines virtual machines are very very easy to get started with they're very easy to learn and to create something uh, you know from scratch is very simple with virtual machines so in case if you're a docker enthusiast do not uh, let this slide be a let down for you because again with the right training docker is again a very easy to use tool and in this entire comparison if i have to give an opinion i do believe that docker uh, you know has the upper hand uh, in this entire comparison so if you are uninitiated in both of these terms docker and virtual machines do try them out and you will find virtual machines are a bit easy to get started with quick but then the nature of docker and the advantages it provides for your applications will blow you away and with this again we can circle back to the same question to understand which one is the best right 
So when the talk is about production environments, when the talk is about daily usage, virtual machines are bulletproof because at the end of the day, they still are the number one choice across the world. So whenever someone wants to use these images or snapshots of operating systems uh, in a production environment. Well, uh, if you think that, okay, if this is the number one choice, then why do we require Docker? Well, the Docker engine or the entire containerization technologies that we're seeing today are basically uh, focusing on making each of these container entities to be small, to keep it as isolated as possible, uh, you know, and to make sure that they are quick at, and to make sure that they're very, very responsive and they can handle any high performance task uh, in an easy way. So, uh, you know, virtual machines are probably Probably being used because they're bulletproof and they're 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 part of the legacy right now. But then there's a good chance, in my opinion, that Docker will completely revolutionize. It's it's in fact already revolutionizing the world of containers and uh, distributed computing. So it could be said that Docker will be used more effectively in multiple applications across the world in the near future as well. So with this, what do you think about the comparison? So if you have any more points to add to this Docker versus uh, virtual machines comparisons video, do head to the comment section and let us know. On that note, you have reached the end of the video.